Good morning, all. Today we will learn a new chapter from economics, our second chapter, sectors of the Indian economy. Look at these pictures first. Are they doing same kind of work? Here people are doing different kind of work, isn't it? These activities they are performing are commonly called as economic activities. Why economic activities? Because it deals with production of goods and services. In these two given pictures, they are doing the work which contributes in the production process. In the other three pictures, people are contributing to the economy by rendering their services. You can see here this man and this woman, they are making bricks. And these women are cultivating, or I mean harvesting cotton. And in these three pictures, this woman here, she is selling clothes to the customer. So she is a uh, shopkeeper and he, uh, this man, he is carrying a luggage and this man, he is delivering letters. So these three are giving services. They are into some services. Just like these activities, there are many more activities going on around us every day. To understand these, they are classified into different groups and these groups are also called as sectors. You must have already learned about these sectors, but here we will understand in a deeper way. Can you guess what are those sectors? Economic activities are classified into three sectors. They are primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. Our very first sector, that is primary sector, it includes those activities which is directly related to the natural resources. For example, cotton. To grow a cotton plant, we depend mainly but not entirely on natural factors like rainfall, sunshine and climate. These are the necessities to grow a plant. That is why it is mainly dependent on these factors, but not entirely. Why? Because humans can also take care of the plant by giving water to them time to time, by giving fertilizers for healthy growth and other care as well. The cotton plant is multiplied by the process of cultivation by humans. Through this activity, cotton is produced. Cotton, therefore, is a natural product. Similarly, in the case of an activity like dairy, we are dependent on the biological process of the animals and availability of fodder, etc. Here, the animals need food to survive and give birth so as to increase their own species to exist. Here, the milk produced by the mother animal is the natural product. Similarly, Minerals, here, minerals and ores are also natural products. So, when we produce a good by exploiting natural resources, it is an activity of primary sector. Here, all the goods are produced by using the natural resources that are available. And remember that this first sector is the very base for all the other products. Primary sector is also called as agricultural sector. Why is it so? Since most of the natural products we get are from agriculture, dairy, fishing, forestry, uh, this sector is also called as agriculture and related sector. Now, in the next sector, that is secondary sector, it is mainly involved in manufacturing activity. It covers activities in which natural products are changed into other forms through ways of manufacturing that we associate with industrial activity. It is the next step after primary. For example, cotton again. Here the cotton is made into yarn and then turned into cloth. And another example is the sugar cane that is turned into sugar or jaggery. This activity, this activity could be carried out at home, at workshop or in a factory. 
and since this sector gradually became associated with the different kinds of industries that came up it is also called as industrial sector so another name for the secondary sector is industrial sector after primary and secondary the next and the third sector is tertiary sector tertiary sector does not produce any goods it mainly helps in developing the other two sectors that is primary and secondary it is an aid or a support for the production process just think if you have the resources and you have a quite large numbers of production you will want to sell it in the market you cannot go by foot everywhere and you cannot do it all alone in a large in a larger scale you will want more people you need good transportation you have to connect to more people and it can be done by the means of communication you will need more money which can be helped by the bank in the form of loan so here many activities are going on these activities that is transport storage communication banking trade are some examples of tertiary activities since all of these activities they generate uh, services rather than goods the tertiary sector is also called the service sector here people are providing services in many different fields besides these services that help in the production of goods there are other services such as teachers doctors washermen barbers cobblers lawyers and people from administration and accounting that helps the society to grow and also new services based on information technology such as internet cafe atm booths Uh, call centers software companies etc have become important everywhere now in this given boxes that is given in your book you can get the clear idea what are these sectors clear pictures are given as an example it shows the goods that are produced directly from the natural resources that is categorized under primary or agriculture sector in the industrial sector that is secondary uh, goods from agriculture is manufactured and produced into a final goods and then these goods are being transported and sold utilized in the tertiary sector who helps in developing the other two sectors by giving their services which gives it another name service sector all of these sectors they are interdependent on each other if one does not work then it hampers the other sector so therefore they are interdependent there is this given table table 2.1 and there are some examples of economic activities here one example is given and you have to fill this other three boxes try to fill these boxes and if you have any doubt you can ask me by doing this you can you will get the clear picture of what these three sectors are and how they are dependent on each other now let us come to our second section comparing the three sectors as we have already discussed that the various production activities in the primary secondary and tertiary sectors they produce a very large number of goods and services many people are also involved in these sectors here in the next step we will see how much goods and services are produced and how many people work in such in each sector here and also here we will understand how do we can count the various goods and services and know the total production in each sector as we all know that it is a very difficult task almost impossible task to calculate every goods and services of the country as the production takes place in thousands and thousands or uh, of numbers or maybe even higher than that also but 
but economists uh, they came up with the suggestion that only the values of goods and services should be used rather than adding up the actual numbers this we will understand from the given example here if uh, 10000 kg of wheat is sold at rupees 8 per kg the value of wheat will be rupees 80000 as 1 kg of wheat is sold at rupees 8 so for 10000 uh, kg of wheat it will be 80000 by multiplying them and the value of 5000 5, coconuts at rupees 10 per coconut will be rupees 50000 here instead of taking every wheat every kg of wheat this main value this value is taken to be calculated also remember that only the final goods and services will be counted final goods and services means the value of the final product this we will understand from the another example here the farmer who cultivates and harvests the wheat he sells uh, the wheat wheat uh, for rupees 8 per kg to the mill and here the mill grinds the wheat and sell it to the company to the biscuit company it can be also of the other company as well it can be of bread and any other things and uh, the mill they sell it for rupees 10 to the company and from that uh, one kg of uh, wheat flour the company makes a biscuit of total number of four packets out of which uh, one packet per packet of biscuit cost 15 rupees 15 so for the four packets uh, it cost total of rupees 60 so only this final goods only this value will be counted and this uh, wheat and wheat flour they are the intermediate goods they are not counted uh, individually because it is already included here see the farmer here he sells the wheat for rupees 8 to the mill then this money is already included here because a purchaser from the mill he buys it for rupees 8 and uh, he ga gains profit from the floor by selling it to the company he gets profit of only rupees 2 and from that the company also gets for per packet he gets rupees 5 in profit so all of this price it is already included in here so only this will be counted in the production if we count the value of the flour and wheat separately uh, it is not correct because then we we would be counting the value of the same things a number of times first as wheat then as flour and finally as biscuits it would be wrong because uh, it is already included in here and hence the value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year and the sum of the three production in the three sectors gives what is called the uh, gross domestic product gross domestic product it is the value of all the final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year it is the gross domestic product that shows how big the economy of a country is and from the world world domestic understand that it includes the products within the country in india the measuring of gdp is undertaken by a central government ministry this ministry with the help of various government departments of all the indian states and union territories they collect information uh, relating to total volume of goods and services and their prices and then they estimate the GDP of each state 
it is a very long and huge task to be completed and it takes a lot of time so that is how the total production is counted and now we will understand the historical changes in sectors in the very beginning primary sector played very important role as the methods of farming changed and agriculture sector began to prosper it produced much more food than before many people were engaged in different activities such as cultivation mining dairy and also number of craftspersons and traders increased buying and selling during those days those old times were also increasing in this field many people were also seen to be employed in various activities in this sector works were based on the natural products it went on for a long time around more than a hundred years with time new methods of manufacturing were introduced factories came up and uh, it started expanding even those people who had earlier worked on farms began to work in factories in large numbers this sector that is secondary sector gradually became the most important in total production and employment but then again as time passed the importance of secondary sector had shifted to tertiary sector especially in developed countries like the western countries as we have seen this sector offers many service sec uh, service it is also called as service sector and large people has the opportunity to work in various fields and this sector has become the most important in terms of total production most of the people are employed in this sector they may be employed under government public or private sectors they are the working people so from the past we can understand how tertiary sector has uh, gained its importance now in the third section we will look at all the three sectors in india here a first graph is given that that shows the production of goods and services in the three sectors this shows the growth from the two different years that is 1973 to 74 and 2013 to 2014 there is a gap of 40 years between them look how much has changed blue blue this color blue is for primary red is for secondary and for tertiary it is green color there has been a huge growth by looking at this graph which sectors seem to have the highest growth in the year 1973 to 74 it was the primary sector if you look closely you can see that it was the primary sector that had the highest growth among them but in 2013 to 14 tertiaries this ter uh, tertiary sector was the largest producing sector from this graph there may be some question that arises what does the comparison between 1973 to 74 and 2013 to 14 show what conclusions can we draw from the comparison so we will understand the rising importance of the tertiary sector in production till now whatever we have understood about the sectors and as shown in the graph why is the tertiary sector becoming so important in india why do you think it has the highest growth and how did it become so important there could be several reasons for these questions here we will look at four main and important reasons the first reason is the need for the basic services as as in any country there are several services such as hospitals educational institutions post and telegraph services police stations uh, courts village administrative offices mun municipal corporations defense transport bank banks insurance companies etc 
that are required in countries. And the second reason is the development of agriculture and industry that leads to the development of services. It develops these services like transport, trade, storage, etc. And thirdly, as services and production increases with time, the income level also rises. As we see today also that people love to go out and do different activities. It is one of the reasons some people who has money start demanding many more services like eating out, tourism, shopping, private hospitals, private schools, professional training, etc. It can mostly be seen at big cities. And the fourth reason is the growing importance of information and communication technology. The production of these services has been rising rapidly. So from this we can understand that in service sector there are many different types of services. Remember that not all of the service sector is growing equally well. At one end, there are a limited number of services that employ highly skilled and educated workers. At the other end, there are a very large number of workers engaged in services such as small shopkeepers, repair person, transport persons, etc. These people barely manage to earn a living and yet they perform these services because there is no other opportunities for them. Hence, only a part of this sector is growing in importance. We shall discuss more in employment of the people in the next section. I hope you got the clear idea on the three sectors. Today we will end our class here and we shall continue the next topic in the next class. Thank you.